is just not about gaining um, world class fame. You know, it is about impacting lives. That's what a good idol does. You know, and there are so many unsaid stories, and you're absolutely right. You know what happened? So the character that uh, Shalini ji was referring to was from a film called Toilet Ek Prem Katha, a film that literally changed my fate overnight. It has impacted our country in a massive way, and that's when I truly realized the power of cinema and the power that I have as an actor, the power to make about a change. Um, so the film was inspired by a real life incident of this lady called Anita who told her husband after she got married that I will not live with you till you build a toilet. Now as a privileged city girl, by privilege I mean I had the privilege of having a bathroom in my house which is a basic right. You know yet in modern India a couple of years ago we were talking about this as a privilege. And once I started doing the film and once I got into the character I realized that it is just not about having a toilet in your house. The problem is a lot more deep rooted. It is to do with our culture. It is to do with the, the, the heightened expectation of a woman that she should wake up at 5 a.m. She needs to go take care of her entire household. She needs to go plow the fields and she needs to go collect water. She will walk kilometers and kilometers in a condition. She could not be well, she could have a broken back, but she does not have access to a toilet in a house, you know? She is subjected to violence, she is subjected to rape, she is subjected to just general um, uh, health threats. Why? Because our culture did not permit us to have a bathroom in our house. But after Toilet Ek Prem Katha came out and we addressed these problems, we saw a massive change. So my idea or what I want to do as an actor through my profession is celebrate these women. I'm constantly looking for stories that can bring about a mindset change that can inspire people because that is my way to give back to my country. Perfect. I think we've, you know, uh, so we've had these uh, long form questions. I have a couple of more long form questions, but I'm going to now ask you some quick questions because I want, I don't want anybody to yawn right now. So very, very quickly, you said you were intelligent. Do you read on a daily basis? This is yes and no. Yes, I do. But I would, I would like to add that a lot of my reading has gone on to my phone. <laughs> Who's your favorite author? Uh, uh, for fiction, I would like to say Paolo Coelho. I have always loved reading him. He still is very, very relevant to me. I have seen a couple of your pictures sitting in vans and reading. Uh, so yes, I can, I can vouch for that. Uh, do you read on a Kindle or do you read on your phone? Uh, on my phone. Uh, uh, yeah. That goes into my research. Okay. Uh, so do you make a to-do list? Most days. Most days. Do you I stick by it? That's okay. Maybe None not. Of us stick by it. But do you make one? I do make one. And do you also write manuals? Not Journals? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not Perfect. yet. Uh, do you also have a problem of uh, aunties saying, Moti ho gayo? Really? All the time. All the time. Okay, do you also have a problem when mamma calls you and says that this is so small dress, why did you do this, why did you eat so fast, why did you eat so late, why did you do this, why did you do this, why did you do this? No, luckily not. Great. Uh, do you also get a question, when will you settle? Oh, absolutely. Like every, every time you're in there. But when I give the answer, my mom gave it to me. So I have like somebody safeguarding me. Perfect, very nice. Uh, I always tell these women and men, and there are a couple of young men here, settle kyu hona hai? The most innovations are done by people who are unsettled yes. in their heads. <laughs> so let's be creative, let's be crazy. Getting married, having children is not settled, please. You just need to be unsettled. Okay, uh, coming back, I have those uh, few more questions, but later. Tell me this. You have been a very strong voice on climate. Uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji has talked about life, which is living for environment. And it has also come up as uh, a concept for the G20 that India now has presidency for. How do you look at sustainability and environment as an entrepreneurial venture? How do you look at it as women contribution to sustainability 
And last but not the least, what do you think about sustainability in your daily life? What is your thought process on it? So I would like to start my answer by saying that anybody who believes that climate change is not real is really living under a rock. It is the largest looming threat to humanity. Um, you know, through my research, because I have been a passionate advocate and I have been working a lot in the field, and through my research I have realized that in this case as well, you know, when there is a climate change related effect, an adverse effect, it is the women that are the most affected. Because women globally, and, I, and it really hurts my heart to say this, are the most vulnerable marginalized community globally. When there is a natural disaster, when there is a drought, when there is a flood, it is the women that are the most affected and the children. You know, when I would read articles that, you know, in uh, parts of India, women actually went through an operation where they had to, they decided to, they decided to remove their uterus because they could not sustain because there was a drought in that area. That's when I started thinking, I'm like, you know, we are the caretakers. We, get, we take care of our children, we take care of our fields. We make 70% of the labor workers in our country. Yet, nobody comes up to us and asks us, what do you think is the problem? So how do women contribute and how can this change? When we have A, women in places of power that are making policies for us, you know, because only they know, they can understand and empathize with our problems. And secondly, when we go to these women that are actually dealing with the problem, you know, that actually now have to walk maybe three kilometers extra because the wells in their uh, village have dried up. You know, where they are now going to other states to work because there's a drought in their state and now they can't sustain taking care of their own farming land. If we go to these women and we ask them, what are your experiences? Because women in rural India have always lived a sustainable life. You know, when I look at my grandmother, as you rightly said, you know, my mother's from Haryana. When I would look at my grandmother, she was one strong woman and she was empowered. So I completely resonated with what you said. But if I go back to the way she lived, you know, the fact that wo apna gila kachra alag karti thi, sukha kachra alag karti thi, wo plastic nahi use karti thi, or, uh, you know, whatever her practices were, she was so thoughtful about the food that she was putting onto the table about the food not being wasted. Obviously, she had her own circular economy in her house. How do we implement those things? And that can only happen if we go, if we go to these women and we include them on panels, we include them on juries, we include their experiences. Because the truth of the matter is, as you said, any problem or any progress that can happen in this world needs to happen with a 50% representation. Perfect. Uh, Having said that, I saw this uh, uh, old lady from Haryana who jumped uh, into the Ganga River in Haridwar because uh, she was 86 years old and uh, when the cameraman turned around to ask her why did she jump off that uh, uh, bridge, she said because side mein bahut bheed thi, to mein upar se kodi. And, uh, you know, uh, the entire, it got trended, it was viral, a lot of uh, uh, journalists came around asking her what she ate, uh, how did she, and she sounded so casual that it's like daily affair for me, what are you uh, doing? And that's how strong women are, we just don't realize that we are trend material in ourselves. <laughs> what we don't need to do is make an effort to trend, we just need to be ourselves. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of women who look at second innings, you know, so uh, I, I've said this in a lot of uh, uh, researches. When COVID happened, you know, you just gave numbers, I'll put numbers onto it. 76% women across the globe are caretakers. In India, 95% including every single uh, woman at home had to take care of their husbands who uh, had COVID or their grandparents or their uh, in-laws and so on and so forth. So 95% of caretakers were women, right? But unfortunately, when COVID struck, 11% drop in vaccination happened for women and children. So yes, these are true numbers. But what, what is amazing and what strikes me very, very hard is that these numbers are right there in front of us. Yet, when COVID happened and all the men sat at home, 
that's when they realized oh you can work from home but all the women who were at home because of children and childbirth they kept saying for years together that you know give us uh, opportunity to work and all the corporates realized that no you can't work from home but all of a sudden the uh, tables have turned and of course women have grabbed this opportunity so there you see a whole uh, increase of women working from home and corporates employing uh, employing these women but this second inning is extremely important and motherhood is also extremely important. People like you who are sitting in position of power need to address this because this is the challenge of women. Inclusive of this, we need to talk about inclusivity in a very different fashion. So women are also fighting disability at various levels. So disabled women is also a second category where we need to have efforts to include these people. So one, is there anything personally that you do? Is there anything that you would want to voice, uh, 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 to become a voice for? And last but not the least, have you ever thought of advocating this cause? And I feel as a woman uh, living in our country today, for me, every cause related to women's rights is something that I would always stand up for and speak for, speak about. But you know, uh, specifically speaking about the sabbatical that women have to take, you know, because for me, a second inning most times is connected to a woman taking a break because of personal reasons. You know, that could be motherhood, that could be, you know, taking care of an elderly person or somebody who's sick. Most times for me, so I'll specifically address that. You know, um, being an actor, there is a taboo, you know, that started off with that, oh, if she gets married, she's done. Usko wo roles ne milenge. Oh, if she becomes a mother, she's done. And I feel so proud today when I look at my colleagues that are breaking these stereotypes and still doing the same kind of parts that they were doing earlier. So I really hope that uh, people in corporates and other fields do get inspired from this. But the fact of the matter is that when a woman takes a break, she, for whatever reasons, if she restarts, she somehow restarts at a disadvantage. And that's what we need to change. You know, she is, obviously, you have to get your skills going. You have to, you know, be with the game. I'm not denying that. But if she is nursing a child, you know, um, see, having a child does not take you back. And that is the ideology that we need to change. But that can also only happen on a corporate level when you have enough women at places of power.